The World Bank has revised India's growth forecast to 7% from 6.6% earlier. They've also issued an urgent call for action for India to diversify its exports as part of its larger growth strategy. Joining us right now to speak about their latest India development update and their recommendations for India's trade policy are World Bank's country director for India, Auguste Kwame, and also joining us is Rand Lee, senior economist at the World Bank. Uh, Auguste, if I could begin with you, give us a sense of what's contributed to the upward revision in the growth forecast, and do you see any challenges for the Indian economy in the near to midterm? Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, in, we have upgraded our forecast from 6.6 to 7 percent, as you said, and there are basically two reasons to that. One is that the global trade uh, dynamics is improving. We think global trade will, will be better than we had initially envisaged several months ago. Um, and that will be good for India because India is a, a fairly large exporter and the global environment, even though India has done very well despite a challenging global environment, if this environment improves, then India will also benefit even more. So uh, this is one reason why we have upgraded our forecast. The second reason is uh, we think agriculture will do better than we had initially envisaged. Last year, agriculture was, you know, did, uh, uh, you know, grew at a very low uh, rate. Uh, and this year with the monsoon, uh, we think that uh, agriculture will do better. And we really, it's good that Indian farmers, uh, uh, you know, remained positive and patient uh, and, and, and now I think they're going to reap the benefits of, of that patience and the fact that uh, fertilizer prices were also maintained at a reasonable level will, will help. So agriculture and trade are the main reason why we upgraded our forecast. All right. Uh, if I were to ask you about challenges related to uh, food prices, challenges related to inflation, how do you see the Indian government and the RBI being able to control uh, inflation and price rise in the country? And on the issue of youth unemployment, uh, your presentation suggested that youth unemployment in the country is still at about 17 percent. Uh, how, uh, how are we doing in terms of reducing that going forward? Uh, thank you very much. So the first question on the inflation part. So this year, for the past fiscal year, we've seen the inflation has been declining. And in the early several months of this fiscal year, we also saw a decline, especially the latest data July, we've seen a sharp drop in the food inflation. But overall, if we look at a longer period of time since the RBI adopted the inflation targeting, we've seen evidence that inflation has been lower than a previous period, uh, less volatile, and also it's better anchor the market expectation as well. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, also to ask you, uh, there has been a debate in India, and this is something that the CA had also asked whether we should be looking at uh, uh, a monetary policy that targets both headline and core inflation, or it should only look at core inflation. What is your view on that? Uh, so on that, yes, there is a debate, but as I mentioned over the past, uh, that it was 80 years of this, uh, since we adopted the inf inflation targeting, the performance has been quite well. So why we are changing is more important uh, why we are changing it. I think the main concern from the market is the elevated and volatile inflation from the food prices. Uh, but for that, it's in the context of India, we are still a lower middle income country and the food item is still takes up a large weight in the consumption basket. So I think one important step would be to review based on our new la uh, latest data, et cetera, to see how that was, has changed and that will improve the effectiveness of the monetary policy. Right, so yeah. one should uh, continue tracking both. Uh, yeah, I think the food inflation weight would be the first step to do. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me also speak about uh, your recommendations on trade. Uh, you've said that India has not risen up and leverage the opportunity created by China uh, reducing its manufacturing in labor intensive sectors or reducing exports in uh, labor intensive sectors. So where do you think the gaps are as far as our trade policy is concerned? Yes, first, um, let me say that um, trade policy has not gone in the right direction in many countries, not just in, in India. Um, you know, you saw our data uh, that many countries, both in the uh, developed country category as well as in developing countries category, increased the number of uh, trade barriers in 2023. And I'm sure data for 2024 will show the same. Um, so 
this is to just say that we think there is a need to improve trade policy everywhere. Mm. Uh, and for India, uh, India has done very well at increasing its share of high-tech good, high-tech export, which is great, which is very good. Uh, but there is an opportunity to increase India's share in uh, export categories where when you export, you also create jobs. Mm -hmm. And those may not necessarily be low-tech, but they're not necessarily high-tech either. They are labor-intensive exports. Um, so there is an opportunity to look at those areas, and it, it, it may include textile, uh, apparel and footwear, uh, it may include, uh, you know, new areas such as green technologies or, or, or input for renewable energy technology, for example. Uh, and I think uh, policies uh, are envisaged for those, especially for the green technology. You know, it's part of uh, a number of programs that the government has in place uh, for technology good, for example, they're part of the PLI. So if those... Uh, effort could bear fruit, uh, then, then we think that India will be able to do three things. Uh, diversify its export market by connecting to global value chains in a way that has been different from the past. Second, exports whilst uh, creating jobs. Um, and, and, and third, be a leader of the global south, really, because then it, India will be exporting not just to the global north, so, so to speak, but India will be exporting also to global south uh, in new areas or not so new areas, uh, but that are not necessarily uh, high tech. Okay. Uh, what, according to you, would be the urgent reforms that India needs? Well, um, uh, uh, three things, uh, as we say in the report. Um, first, re uh, reducing trading, trade costs further. India has done very well by reducing trade costs. Um, and, uh, you know, through the national uh, mm. uh, logistic policy, for example, and you could see that India's ranking in the logistic performance index has improved. Mm. So trading costs has come, uh, mm. have, have come down, but there is a need to reduce them further. Mm. Uh, second, uh, reduce trade barriers, mm. you know, both tariff and non-tariff barriers. And this applies to many countries, not just India, but you know, barriers have increased. So I think here is an area where uh, India could reduce its trade barriers even before other countries do likewise. Mm -hmm. You know, you no need to wait for other countries to reduce their trade barriers. And of course, it's a game, a, you know, a game theory. Sometimes if you reduce your barriers too fast, maybe it hurts you. But at the same time, if you wait until others reduce their barriers, you may lose as well. So, it, you know, the timing is very, very critical. Uh, but there is a need to reduce trade barriers. Uh, and the third is uh, to have more trade integration with more countries, uh, and I mentioned that earlier, uh, you know, expand really the, 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 the trading partners uh, globally uh, and, and go to new countries where India has not exported before. And that's why RCEP uh, needs to be rethought by India? Not necessarily. I mean, I'm looking, talking about a broader concept than, than RCEP. I think RCEP has just 15 countries, right? The world is, has 10 times more, more than 10 times more than that. So I'm thinking of a broader uh, uh, set of countries. You know, India can export a lot more to Latin America, a lot more to Africa, a lot more to, uh, you know, um, Asia, uh, you know. So, so I think... It is, it is, it, India produces a lot of goods for its domestic market, a lot, right? And many of those goods are not exported. As my, uh, for example, in pharmaceutical, India produces for the domestic market as well as the global market. Why not do the same for textile, for example? Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm talking about a, a much broader world than asset. Right. Uh, Ran, if I were to ask you about the performance of the production-linked incentive scheme, some schemes have been successful, others have been slow to take off. But do you feel... Uh, if we want to target a bigger chunk of the global export pie, some of these PLI schemes will need uh, revisiting, uh, some rethinking and reforms as well? Uh, so for the PLI, it was implemented mostly 2020. So, so far we've seen four years, but investment production is a longer term. So we probably will need more time to see the real results. 
Uh, but to the general, as uh, we mentioned during the uh, the, uh, the presentation, there are good intentions behind this, so focus on certain sectors, et cetera. But what we more uh, care more about is the longer term, whether mm -hmm. it has it's associated with fiscal costs, mm -hmm. as we've seen in history in many countries. So whether the fiscal cost is sustainable, and also whether that's sustainable for the private sector, they can survive for a longer period of time, they can improve their competitiveness. These are the factors, uh, areas we'll focus on when we further evaluate uh, the outcome of the PLI down the road. Right. Uh, August, if I were to ask you about our imports from China, they have mm -hmm. risen from uh, $70 billion in 2018, 2019, and they've gone up to $101 billion. Uh, exports to China have remained stagnant. How does India continue to grow? Do we continue remaining integrated with the Chinese supply chain or there are need for measures to cut down imports from China as well? Hmm. Interesting question. Uh, one should think of, you know, of it, I would think of it differently. Maybe India is doing the right thing by importing more from China and producing things in India to export more to other countries. Mm. You know, the world is not just a bipolar world. It's mm. not just China and India. The world is bigger than two countries, right? So if you need to import your intermediate goods from one country and produce things and export more goods and services to the rest of the world, perhaps it's a good strategy. Uh, clearly, China produces a lot of things that many countries import to produce their own thing. And India is not the only country that is importing more from China. Many countries are importing more from China. The question is, what are they doing with these imports? Mm -hmm. Is it just for consumption, uh, which may not necessarily be good, but, is it, but if it is to produce for uh, export, it may be good. If it is to, be, to produce things for domestic consumption in a way that is more efficient, Maybe it's good also. So I wouldn't focus on the numbers, you know, going from 70 billion to 100 billion and not uh, exporting more to China. I will ask myself the question, why should China be the only export market that India should focus on? You know, India can export to many other countries from which India may not be importing anything. So look at it at, uh, globally. The right. question is whether India's trade uh, is becoming more balanced or not. And even if in the short term trade is not completely balanced, uh, it may be a good thing because you want to strengthen uh, production, you want to strengthen investment now, which requires some import, in order to create an economy that is strong enough for the future so that that economy can export a lot more to the future. So again, it is a long-term uh, process. Yeah, Rand Lee and Auguste Kwame, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Uh, so that was uh, the World Bank with its view on India's growth story and the need for diversification in exports.